Hare Krishna Prabhu, my obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> okay. So we can begin? Is it okay to begin? Hare Krishna Maharaj, Allah Pranam. Yes, Maharaj, you can start the Rathira. Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachadeshatarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Pai Evachcha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare so welcome everybody to our Bhakti by Bhav class. We're studying Canto 6 of the Srimad Bhagavatam and we're on chapter number 11, right? In the last chapter we heard about how Dadichi gave up his body, he sacrificed his body for the, for the demigods because the Indra came and requested Dadichi if he could give the bones from his body. So Dadichi was very kind and cooperative, he was very rich in austerity and he was willing to give up his body to allow the demigods to get the bones and with the help with the bones and with the help of Vishwakarma they could make a nice weapon for Indra. And the idea is that with this weapon Indra will be able to kill Vritasura. Vritasura is the enemy of the demigods. So we heard how the, the demigods became very powerful again. Previously they had been defeated by the demons, but this time when the demigods, when the demons tried to attack, when the demons tried to attack the demigods, the demigods cut all their, all their things which the demons threw at them, the demigods just cut it all into pieces. The demons were throwing their missiles and their arrows and everything they could. They even started to throw trees and rocks. But the, de the demigods could just cut it all into pieces and became dust. So the demons were shocked to see the power of the demigods. And the demons Well, the demons turned and ran from the battlefield. I, you know, you, you always come when I'm giving class, you know. Just, just put some little bit of milk in here, just add it in.
So the, the demons were running away from the battlefield. But Vridasura, he doesn't run away. Vridasura is not that kind of person. Right? We heard in the last class, we were hearing about how one should die a hero's death. And there were two conditions, right? Who remembers what were the two conditions to die a hero's death? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Guru. Guru Maharaj, one was died uh, by fighting on the battlefield. Yeah, to die on the battlefield, right. That was one. And the other one is to adopt the bhakti yoga and then... Yes, to give up one's body absorbed in thought of the Lord. In, in samadhi or mystic trance, taking shelter at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So both these ways are glorious deaths. That's the death of a hero. Prabhupada said, you don't want, we don't want to die like cats and dogs. In Bhagavad Gita, it also describes you can die in the mode of ignorance or die in the mode of passion or die in the mode of goodness. And according to what mode you die in, you will go to that mode in the next life. So a devotee, he wants to leave the body in good consciousness. Ideally, you want to be hearing the holy name or in the association of devotees at least. We gave some examples in the last class. So when the demons were running away from the battlefield, it was very cowardly of them to run away. And the, de the demigods also didn't behave very well because the demigods came chasing after the demons and they tried to hit them and attack them from behind. So Fritasura was very disturbed to see all this. What did Vritasura have to say about their behavior? Who knows? Anybody been reading the text? You will know what happens. They are, they are like covered, uh, according to Vritrasura, those who are flying from the bat fleeing from the battlefield as well as uh, the demigods were trying to attack those who were fleeing. So uh, it is not an act of and how did Vridasura compare them? What did he say they were like? Like uh, they were cool. Yes. Why? Why did he say they were stool? Because they were not doing their duty. Uh, they are like what Yeah, the stool comes from the stomach of the mother. The child also comes from the stomach of the mother. So they come out from the same place. And if, if one is not a hero, then it's not very pleasing or satisfying for the mother that the son is cowardly. So Vritasura said like that to them, that your, you people are like stool coming from the mother's body. You should fight like heroes. But you are cowardly, so you are just like the stool. 
And Prabhupada quotes Tausi Das. Tausi Das, a great poet, he said that just like urine, urine and the child, they both come from the same channel. So if the child is not a good devotee, if he doesn't have good qualities, then the mother or the father think, no need to have a child, but this child is just like urine, it has no more value than urine. Or sometimes they say, Chanika Pandit, he says, it's like a blind eye. The son who is not a devotee and who is not a hero, has no good qualities, then the son is compared to a bad eye. The bad eye just gives you trouble. You can't see anything with it, but it just gives you a lot of trouble. So in the same way a child or the son who is not a devotee and who is not a hero, then no good. Waste of time to have the child, right? This is the point. So, very important, if we want Krishna conscious children, bringing children into the world, the Srimad Bhagavatam says, don't become a mother and father unless you can deliver your children from birth and death. But the son can also deliver the parents. The son is called Putra, the one who saves a father from going to hell. So if you get a good son, it's a great blessing for the father. So Prabhupada said how, he, of course, he was born in a Vaishnava family. And his Guru Maharaj, Om Vishnupad Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, was also born in a devotee family. So it's very good birth. You get a good birth, it's a good start to life. But birth is not birth only. One still has to go on and develop his devotion and develop the the, the, the qualities of the devotee. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had many children, but they didn't all take up the preaching mission. There was uh, Lalit, Lalit Kumar, and there was our own Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. I think only two of them really helped a little bit. Lali Kumar, he didn't really do much. Okay, so uh, Vritasura rebukes the demons and he rebukes the demigods also because the demigods are also not behaving properly. Why not? What, what are the demigods doing wrong? Who can say? Hare Krishna Mara. they are chasing the enemies from behind and try to kill them. So, what's wrong with that? That's, that's against the law of uh, fighting. What is the law? You should, fight, you should fight with someone who is in front of you uh, equipped with the weapon. You should not fight with someone who doesn't have a weapon on. Right. They should be face to face. They should be equally matched. It should be a fair fight. And if people are running away, then they're cowards. Just leave them. Let them go. So Vridasura was disgusted. The demigods and the demons, they were both not behaving properly. And he chastised them. So then 
Indra comes by. And Indra, although he's got his weapon made from the bones of the Dichi, Indra threw his club at Vritasura. He threw this club. Now Indra's, you know, he's powerful. He's the king of heaven. He's very powerful. And he threw this club with all of his might at Vritasura. And what does Vritasura do? He catches it with his left hand. <laughs> with his left hand, he catches it. The left hand, that's right. You know, that's the dirty hand. It's the hand you use to clean the body. Right? When we eat food, we eat with the right hand. When we clean the body, we use the left hand. So Vritasura showed his contempt for Indra by catching the weapon of Indra with his left hand. And then he takes it and he hits Indra's elephant, Airavrata, and he beats it with the club and, he, and blood comes out from the mouth of Airavrata, the elephant. And he knocks the elephant back 14 yards. And when he hit the elephant, it made a great sound. And all the demigods and the demons, they heard it. They were all shocked. And they saw Vritasura, what he'd done, how he'd hit the elephant with that club. They were all, they were all appreciating. They said, oh, great hero. This Vritasura is so powerful. The big, huge elephant of Indra was knocked back and injured, and in Indra even fell off. Indra was riding on the back of Airavata, he was sitting up there on top of Airavata, and he fell off because the elephant got knocked back. Could you imagine knocking back an elephant 14 feet, 14 yards? You know, I see the elephants here in Mayapur, they're so, they're so heavy, so big, cannot imagine moving one of them even an inch. But Vritasura was so powerful that he knocked this Airavrata, who is a celestial elephant, he's very special, not an ordinary elephant. He could knock him back 14 yards and knock Indra off. <laughs> So it was a big shock. But Vritasura, he doesn't take advantage. He doesn't take advantage. He doesn't think, now I'm going to come and I'll kill Indra. Because he thinks Vritasura, he follows the etiquette. He follows the laws. And he, he, he lets Indra get down. He, lets, he wants Indra to get his weapon. He wants Indra to have a fair battle with him. So he leaves Indra and he leaves Airavrata, he leaves them, and Vritasura doesn't worry about them anymore. So Indra, he came by and he got, he, he saw Airavrata's bleeding. So Indra has magic power, he has mystic power. And he used this mystic power to heal the wounds of Airavrata. The elephant was really injured, he was really hurt by the, the beating of Vritasura, but Indra could heal it. Indra, just by his hands, he rubbed the elephant and immediately the elephant sore and the pain and the injury was all cured. So that was Indra took care of his elephant and then after he gets the elephant taken care of, then Indra stands beside the elephant and he sees Vritasura in front of them. So there's a conversation takes place between the two of them. Between, it's really actually Vritasura Vritasura is doing all the talking. Vritasura is talking to Indra.
right? What's, what's he saying? What's he going to say to Indra? We'll have a look. Let's see the text here. Maharaj? Yes? Here he reminded Indra's act of killing the Brahmana Vishwarupa who treated him as a priest. Ah, that's the first thing he says to Indra, right? Then second thing he said, uh, we should depend on the Lord Vishnu for everything. Mm. Okay, let's look at this first statement of Indra. Uh, let me, just a minute. I just wanted to share the text. Okay. Let's see, we're up to... I think we're up to Okay, we're up to about text 14 here and now as we're going through the chapter or text 13 even. Yes, as Mariji said, Vridasura begins by really insulting the pride of Indra. He wants Indra to know, he said, you know, you're just, you're, a, you're the king of heaven, but you're really, you're really low class, you're really nobody, because you killed, you killed your guru, right? Vritasura was actually, he's the brother of Vri, rather Vishwarup is the brother of Vritasura. Vritasura is coming to fight with Indra and he's telling him, you killed my brother. And he was, my brother was your guru and he was your priest. And you, you hired him to do the yagya, to do the sacrifice for you. But then you killed him. So what kind of person are you? You're really a low class person. You have no good qualities. And Vritasura is really laying it on to Indra. He's letting him know what kind of person you are, Indra that you could do this kind of thing, that you hired him to be your priest, you wanted him to do the yagya for you, and he did it, and he did it nicely, and you killed him. So what kind of person are you that you could kill your guru? So, like this, Indra is you know, doesn't have much to say because he knows he's guilty. So it's described here in text 13, it says, Thinking of Indra's sinful activities, he became mad with lamentation and forgetfulness. Laughing sarcastically, he spoke as follows. Right, going on text 14, Vritasura said, he was killed a Brahmana. So to kill a Brahmana, of course, that's a big, that's a very sinful thing to do. To kill a Brahmana, get a lot of karma for that. But Indra did this, he killed a Brahmana and killed the, the, this, not just any Brahmana, but this is actually the spiritual master and he's the brother of Vritasura. And so Indra, now Vritasura tells Indra, he said, when I pierce your heart, then I will get revenge for my brother. And Vritasura has a trident, he has his trishu, he's come to fight, he's got a big trishu, huge trishu, he's a big Demon, very big demon, Vrita, one who is everywhere. Just from his name we can understand how ferocious, how terrible he must have been. And he has this big trident and he tells Indra, I'm going to 
when I pierce your heart, then even the fire will not burn you. Your body will be food for the vultures or for the jackals. That's what will happen to you. This is what it's, this is what Vrita says to Indra. He said, "You, your body." But, but there's an alternative, right? He said, "Yeah, if I kill you, Indra, that's what will happen to you. But what will happen if Indra kills Vritasura? Who can say? Anybody knows?" What happens if when Indra if Indra kills Vritasura? This is actually the wish of uh, Lord Vishnu. So Vritasura is telling to uh, Indra that if he actually killed me, then I will actually go back home back to Godhead. So this is the wish of the Lord. Yeah. This is the Lord's desire. Right. Yeah. This is a. Uh, Nice point There's, uh, that if if uh, if Indra will use his weapon, his thunderbolt weapon, which was given to him, then he can kill Vritasura. Actually, Indra has not really understood the power of that weapon. The the thunderbolt weapon. He, in the beginning I told about how he used the club and he threw the club at Vritasura. So when the club was not successful and because Vritasura could catch it and then came and he hit Airavata, the elephant, with it. So Indra thought, oh my weapon is no good. He thought the, the club was no good, so he thought maybe this, these bones won't be any good either. So Indra was not properly appreciating the value of this weapon which he had. He should have proper appreciation for the weapon because remember, it was the instruction of Lord Vishnu. And just the fact that it was Lord Vishnu who told him to go and make this weapon, this is an indication that the weapon must be very powerful and that certainly it can kill Vritasura. But Indra is not thinking like that. Indra's, you know, he's although he's got the weapon, it's got that thunderbolt weapon, he, he, he wasn't thinking to use it. He'd thrown the club and that had, that had been defeated and now he's thinking, oh, I, I don't have any weapon now. But Vritasura is telling him, no, you have the weapon, you have this thunderbolt and this is, this is the instruction of Lord Vishnu, so it's very powerful. And Vrita is encouraging Indra that you have this weapon, you can kill me, you can kill me now. While I, while I fix my mind on the Lord, on the lotus feet of Lord Sankarshan, you can kill me. Indra is very, uh, rather Vritasura is very intelligent. He understands that if, if he can die while his mind is fixed on the Lord, then certainly his next life destination will be very special, very good. So Indra, uh, Vritasura wants to encourage Indra to use this weapon, use this thunderbolt weapon and to kill, to kill Vritasura. But Indra is not sure about it, it's, you know, it's, Somehow he's hesitating. Anyway, Vritasura is speaking to him, and Vritasura is really giving heavy language to Indra. He says, You're a very low class person, you're a disgusting person, 
He says, when I pierce your heart with my trident, then I shall be free from all doubts. From, from, I'll be free from the debt to my brother. So this is Vridasura's thinking, that Vridasura is thinking that you killed my brother, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to get revenge on you. This appears to be the thinking of Vritasura, but we will see as we go on, Vritasura is not just come on, he's not just thinking to get revenge. Vritasura is actually very rich in devotion. If he just wanted revenge, he knows that's not going to be good for his bhakti. Arjuna, just, Arjuna, he didn't want to just to get revenge. And Krishna didn't tell any of his devotees, get revenge. No, he said, do your duty, do what's expected of you, but don't be, you know, don't be lazy and mischievous and just don't, don't do nonsense. So Vrita Sura said, I... I will pierce, he says to Indra, I will pierce your heart with my trident. But then he says, uh, if, if, if the demigods come to help you, if the other demigods come to help you, then I will cut their heads off as well. And I'll use their heads to worship Bhairava and with, with their heads, we will, we will call all the leaders of the ghosts to come and we will offer these heads to them. Not a very pleasant business, not a very pleasant topic of discussion, but this is the nature of war. This is the nature of this conflict between the demigods and the demons. And Vritasura, he has to speak in this way because he wants, he wants them to understand, he wants all these demigods to understand why he's fighting them. That Indra had killed his brother and he, he wants, and he's come, he's taken his birth. One reason is to establish, to help to establish the Dharma, but the other reason is also to give people bhakti yoga and to help them to understand Krishna. Many people, they may know Bhagavad Gita, but they don't always understand the importance of Lord Krishna or the process of bhakti. They've got some other ideas from it. Some people, they read the Bhagavad Gita and they forget totally about Krishna. It's incredible. They talk about Bhagavad Gita and never talk about Krishna. So we don't want that. We want people to, to develop some appreciation for Lord Krishna. Even before Lord Krishna's appearance, right? This is, we're talking about Indra and Brahma. This is before the the before the Kali Yuga, long before the Kali Yuga. This is at the time of the, the end of the Satya Yuga and the beginning of the Treta Yuga. So this time the demigods and the demons, they had a big fight. And the demons are in fear, they're afraid of the demigods. But Vritasura is not afraid. He stayed to face the demigods. He's not going to run away. All right, so what we want you to do, we have an exercise for you. We want you to analyze the, the, the thinking of Indra. What was the, the fault? What, what, what faults did Indra do in his dealings in this? Lila in this pastime, in this encounter with Vritasura. Because we know Indra is, he's not really the hero. It's Vritasura who's the hero. So what did Indra, what was, what were the faults that we can find in Indra's character, 
in his dealings in this situation. We, and when we, once we see the faults of Indra, then we know what we also have to be aware of in dealing in similar situations. So, who's going to put the... How many devotees have we got here tonight? We have 16, Maharaj. 16, okay, so four groups. We can make... Yeah, four groups we can make, Maharaj. Four groups of four. And we want you to analyze it, come up with the faults Indra made in his dealings with Vritasura. Okay. All right, just like that. Analyze this encounter between the Vritasura and Indra and what was his mistakes. We'll give you... We'll give you... What, seven minutes? Okay. Seven, eight minutes. Because you need time to come, go in, time to come out. The whole thing's going to take ten minutes. Okay, go ahead. Yes, Maharaj, I'll say in the one minute, Maharaj. Okay, group one will be Amrita Padma Mataji. Kalpataru Janva, uh, Prerna Mataji, and Radha Madhav. Group 2 is Nankishwar Prabhu, Om Bhavin Prabhu, Parmanan, Patip Pavan, and also myself. Then uh, group three is Revati Gopi Mataji, Seva Padma Mataji, Shintala Mataji, okay, three, three of you only. Venkat Gopinath Prabhu, you join uh, group number two. From your group, right? Yeah. yeah. I will, I'll put you there. Okay, before that I'll, I'll add group. Hmm? I'll put these three Matajis there. Shobha Ishwada, Shubhangi Mataji, Suguna Vrinda Mataji. Hare Krishna. Sorry, Madhuri. Without unmuting myself, I was talking loud, I think. Sorry. Really? <laughs> I sorry, it. sorry. <laughs> I talked all everything. Now only I realized. Very sorry. Yeah, Madhuri actually. Um, uh, from my side, actually, I thought that he made two mistakes. Uh, first two mistakes are, uh, as per the instruction of the Lord, 
he actually conducted a bit. he posted vishwarupa he approached vishwarupa and actually asked him when uh, he asked him to act as a spiritual master he requested uh, by the instruction of the lord later he doesn't have faith on him so he killed vishwarupa the brahmana yeah similarly by the instruction of the lord actually he got the bones from the vichi and he made a thunderbolt with that and actually the lord instructed him that this is uh, by this using this weapon he can actually kill vritashura mm-hmm. but again he he doesn't have full faith on that mm-hmm. so he was wondering he that whether the, the weapon is having yeah lack of faith on the instruction of the lord mm-hmm. instead of that he used this club burner he used this yeah. is this first he used that and it was a failure and then again he used that uh, the digits uh, that uh, thunderbolt that one also he was not sure he was uh, he actually stood up silently you no know? he didn't use uh, it immediately and uh, he has no full faith in that and actually uh, the other mistake is he was always he wanted to protect his uh, throne and uh, that uh, position uh, his position yeah position. Position. Uh, he was always want to keep that position he is afraid that others will take his what, position what do you think the reason is why he lacks faith in in the guru and and then in the what's his what's it, why is it he's so weak in faith so much why why is it you know indra hasn't got faith why he has no faith in guru uh, because actually the guru acted for both the side like he was feeling that he is supporting the devi gods as well as he was That's supporting the, yeah the deities also the asuras also so he was thinking that if the asuras also actually become powerful then again it will affect his position and before vishruva he was proud of his opulence and that's why he, he neglected uh, prahaspati first guru and then second time he got it uh, vishruva and that also he was not uh, because vishruva was assisting that uh, Uh, demons uh, so he killed vishruva also so he was not uh, he was ready to kill their guru also that much he was not faith in the guru also <laughs> life is cheap for him eh? you kill anyone who opposes anyone who gets in the way of his sense gratification yes yeah to maintain his power to maintain his position yeah he's actually he's very attached and he wants to continue right yeah yes he he wants to keep his position yeah he was proud he want to be the indra always he want to be the king of the demi gods uh, he doesn't want to give that position to anybody always he is afraid of his uh, if somebody will take uh, his position in our watch mm-hmm. always is like material attachment is a big big problem his throne he was attached to that throne uh, his, uh, and the more one has opulence then the more attached uh, we are yes. so being the king of heaven not a very not very good for spiritual advancement is it not very good for spiritual progress yes yes so much so much sense gratification and opulence yeah make it difficult to remember krishna to remember i'm proud of that hmm. okay thank you i'll leave you to it Hare Krishna. Ek minute for that. I'll make the notes. One minute. Have you got some good notes? Good points? Varaj, you're on mute. Varaj. Hare Krishna. Yes.
Oh, sorry. Maharaj came to see what we are doing. Yeah, I came to see how you're doing. Are you get, get coming up with some reasons for Indra's... Uh, yes, Indra's. Maharaj, we, we came up with uh, five points. Oh. Yeah. Okay, wait. What, you want to tell me some of them? What have you got? Uh, we'll share Maharaj now. Well, I can wait. Okay, you, you've got five points, yeah? Mm -hmm. And you understand Indra's problem, huh? You, you, <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Have you got the solution to his problems? Uh, we, we'll discuss that now, Maharaj. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, how are you doing? Are you yes, Mataji, you, you tell Mataji, I by force 21 22 22 is the main thing okay do, do, do you have some good re have you managed to come hari krishna have you come up with some good reasons for indra's uh, perplexity for indra's situation Yes, Hare Krishna. Have you managed to come up with some reasons? Have you analyzed yeah. the situation? Uh, yes, Maharaj. The main thing is uh, uh, Indra has uh, killed a uh, uh, spiritual master and uh, the qualified Brahmana and also more than that, uh, elder brother of uh, Vritrasura. And uh, why he did that one he is mainly because of uh, his... Uh, uh, pride, which is there in verse number 22, because of uh, his uh, pride and uh, he is materially opulent, that uh, and dharma, hartha, kama, and mental agitation, anxiety, and uh, uh, these, uh, these things, uh, these are the things which made him to do like that. And always he will be engrossed uh, materially. He is uh, not always in Krishna conscious. Hmm. Right. So, why? What's his problem? He is uh, always uh, yeah, he is always in sense gratification. That is the main problem. <laughs> he is loading himself for material. Strong. Too many material desires. Eh? Yes, yes, Maharaj. So what's the solution? How would, how would you advise him if Indra was to come to you? How would you advise him? Like, um, nah, because of a devotee association and uh, oftenly uh, he is getting problems, so he will go to see the Lord, Krishna. He will always uh, seek help of, uh, all, uh, all demigods will seek help of uh, Krishna and to get uh, um, rid of uh, these battles and everything. Actually, Hindra's position itself is like that. 
he is always in a materially inclined he is always in sense gratification so the position itself is like that he cannot become always 100% uh, krishna conscious <laughs> Any way you can help him? Someone in that situation, what should he do? Maybe he should resign. Huh? Give up being Indra. Step down. Yes, Maharaj. He has to leave everything and he has to uh, do devotion service. Then only he can uh, come out of all this. <laughs> Pure devotion service. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. He yeah. have to leave this position it is necessary or well what what's well we're going to talk about it in a minute but i'll wait till we get everybody together and we'll discuss it more eh? i think we should do that now we'll we'll finish the discussion we'll get everybody together Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna Prabhu, can we finish the meetings now? Hare Krishna Maharaj. We we'll bring everybody. Maharaj, I got disconnected from Zoom, so now I'm waiting outside. You're outside. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Okay, so we'll get every. As we'll break. Who's in? Who who made the groups? Jai Govind Prabhu, you sh we should end the meeting now. Bring everybody back. He's not here. I'll, I'll WhatsApp him and tell him that. <laughs> Which group is he in? Uh, he's in group number two. Yeah, he's in group number two. Break the room, Prabhu. Yes, uh, we should. Time up, right? Yes, Maras, break the room, right? Maras will be waiting. Maras, can we close the meeting, Maras? Yes, please Hi. close the break meeting. Breakout room will close. We'll join the main session, Maras. Right. Okay, so I think group, we'll hear from group four first of all. There were two ladies there. Group four, they were having a, they had a good, they had a good understanding of the situation. And group four, the spokesman. Is everyone back? material opulence only and here in this case also uh, you know when uh, he dropped his weapon he is afraid to take it thinking that it may not work okay anyway we'll now we'll discuss you know Maharaj how they come all right so uh, Maharaj, uh, other devotees has to join Maharaj I'll, I'll close all the rooms yeah okay please yeah Happy belated birthday. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> Bless me that I never have to take birth again. Krishna Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> you have to bless us, Maharaj. So we can do parikrama with you. Hmm. <laughs> Tell them to 
Okay, is everyone here now? Yeah, Maharaj, they are coming back, Maharaj, one by one. <laughs> Not everybody got in the group. Some people <laughs> got locked out. <coughs> Seconds, it will close, Maharaj. Okay. Ah, okay. So, all are back, Maharaj. Okay, very good. So, we'd like you have a spokesman for each group, I assume. Someone's a spokesman. Yes, yes Maharaj. Yeah, oh. who's a spokesperson for group one? Okay, so who's the spokesman for group one? All right, can you tell us what you discussed? Well, you want to tell everyone? Everyone needs to hear. Okay. Um, Hare Krishna. Uh, the main uh, this thing is uh, uh, Indra has killed uh, the qualified Brahmana, especially the spiritual master and the elder brother of Rudrasura. So the this was the mistake and. Um, and also other than this, why he has done like that, it is because of uh, uh, he was uh, materially too opulent. Uh, at the same time, the agitation, pride and uh, the enmity, anxiety, all these things are developmental agitation because of all these things. And also uh, in uh, verse number 23, it is given three, uh, like uh, dharma, artha and kama, that is religion, economic development and sense gratification, all these things which uh, these are the main things which made him to uh, do these things and uh, he is always materially inclined, materially uh, he is not in Krishna conscious. So the tendency is always, uh, Maya is already always occupied him to do any kind of mistakes. You said Maya engaged him to do these mistakes. What what was the cause? What was his Maya? Maya is material inclination. Why, why, why he's got this material inclination? Because uh, heaven, uh, that position, that position is uh, too much attached uh, and uh, that made him too much attached to material uh, uh, sense gratification. So what's it, cannot, what can be done? What can be done to correct him? What's he lacking? Uh, like, what's he like? He, he has to listen to, he has to respect the spiritual master, he has to uh, do the religion and main thing is he has to be in Krishna conscious. Then only it is possible for him to um, come out of the Maya and uh, he has a spiritual master he has the spiritual master but he is not following and he is not uh, following doing any uh, spiritual master words and because of material attachment uh, it is uh, the lesson for us also like uh, we, we should follow our Guru's words strictly otherently then only we can progress in Krishna consciousness. So, in, 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 order to in order to follow the spiritual master, what do we require? What, what devotees is... Huh? Devotees, devotees. are... So and uh, 
uh, it should be meek humble but uh, hindra was very tried the, there's uh, one very there's very one thing very very important one thing you have to have in the spiritual master if you're going to follow the spiritual master you have to have one quality which is very important we should be meek and humble and faith faith that's right that's the word that's the word i wanted to hear from you faith the faith has to be very strong you have to have that faith in the guru if you if we don't have faith in the words of the spiritual master then you can see what happens you see indra he, he has he took in your he, he took the guru but he didn't have faith he didn't understand the importance of having faith in the instructions of the spiritual teacher and so he got problems of course material materially is he is he a success materially is indra a success no actually no why not because always he was uh, having uh, problems he is always a dependent and uh, and uh, he is always in a fearful state only when uh, about his position well that's always going to be there in material world he had a, he had he had material he had his material facilities right he has his position he kept his position he's a demigod he has a duty to perform yes maharaj but he was too pride and he was not keeping the though materially he was there he was not keeping krishna in center that aham i my mine that one was there with him all the time yes but those are those are spiritual qualities that is you know, materially he had everything yes materially he's he's you know he's a success he won the battle he led the demigods they defeated they defeated vritasura mumbu see even how he kills vritasura so he won the battle materially he su success but who is the real hero that is only known by the devotees only the devotees can understand and we can we we can understand by hearing the words of vritasura how vritasura speaks you know what are his qualities what's the difference with vritasura and indra what's the difference between the two of them apart from one's a demon and one's a devotee one's on the side of the demigods one's on the side of the demons what's the difference in their qualities or in their desires even actually uh, yeah mara shalai yeah go ahead um indra is always uh, he want the possessions material possessions but ritrasura he will never uh, wanted any material uh, possessions and uh, indra is always uh, you know uh, pride in pride but ritrasura is always uh, humble meek and uh, um, uh, and uh, he was uh, like uh, you know uh, to he was not at all uh, working uh, very hard to labor very hard what does what does vritasura want ritrasura always want uh, devotion 
devotee, uh, unalloyed uh, devotion. He always uh, like to do unalloyed devotion. Yeah. Yeah, he wants Vritasuras not interested to stay in the material world. So that's why he's encouraging Indra, kill me, kill me, I don't mind. Body's going to die one day anyway, so use your thunderbolt. Vishnu has given you the thunderbolt, so it's got all the potency of Vishnu. It's meant to kill me. Vridasura knows that Indra's got the thunderbolt and he knows it was given by Vishnu. So he knows it's meant to kill him, but Vridasura is not worried about it. He's saying, go ahead, kill me. I'll be happy because the, why will Vridasura be happy? Because he will get the association of great souls, of devotees. When he's freed of his demonic body, he'll be able to go back to Godhead and get the association of devotees. So the important point in this is the faith. Indra doesn't have faith in the words, he doesn't have faith in Vishnu even. Vishnu gave him the Brajra, that thunderbolt weapon and, and Indra is hesitating to use it because he, when he used the club, when he used the club, he failed. So he thought, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything with the club. I won't be able to do anything with these bones either. This weapon made out of the bones of the Dichi, this won't do any good either. So Indra's faith is so weak. He doesn't have faith in Vishnu. He didn't have faith in the Guru. And this is the problem. Faith is so important. We have to have faith. As Mataji said, we have to have faith in the instructions of the Guru. How much faith? The, the verses, Yasha Devi para bhakti yata Devi tata Guru. You have equal faith in the words of Guru and in God. You should have the same faith in Guru as you have in God. Because Guru is the representative of God. So the, practically they're non-different. Indra, however, is lacking. Let's hear from another group, group number two. Tell us what you discussed. Yeah, yeah Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, here, uh, Lord Vishnu uh, has given a solution to Indra. Again, uh, uh, as discussed previously, Indra didn't have the faith. So, he had a doubt uh, whether if I use this thunderbolt, will, uh, you know, Vrita Sarai will be killed or not. So, he didn't have the faith. And, uh, uh, and Dasara also uh, reminded about uh, uh, to Indra about uh, no yeah, uh, that uh, he is killing uh, the spiritual master and is you know the guru so that also he reminded and uh, here uh, uh, Dasara also telling uh, Indra that uh, the, the right uh, perspective uh, of the death like you know the, the the main purpose so how to have the you know glorified death like you know so the death is going to come for everyone so. Uh, do uh, fearlessly do whatever you want. So that's what you know. He is uh, uh, telling Indra that you know you do uh, um, like you know have, have faith, and then you know this is given by Vishnu, so you have you can have faith, and you should go ahead, kill me. That's what you know, he also is telling about this. And here, um, Maharaj, uh, as discussed previously, so uh, Indra was uh, uh, you know he was uh, attached to the material uh, position position. So. Even though uh, Lord uh, Vishnu came in front of Indra and you know, guided him, so but still, you know, he was uh, having the attachment with the uh, the metal, his, his metal position. So he was little, it was, yeah, he was actually worried. 
So this, uh, uh, so the Vrtasura uh, made him realize this, and uh, this is actually uh, in, uh, indirectly Lord Vishnu was actually favorable to Vrtasura rather than Indra because uh, uh, by uh, getting killed by by thunderbolt from Indra, Indra, so uh, Vrtasura would uh, you know go back uh, go back to Godhead. So uh, even uh, so, if uh, Vindra is victorious, so he will be still staying in this material world. So, uh, so Lord Vishnu was favorable to uh, Vrtasura. <laughs> so, uh, Maharaj, the solution, uh, um, what we discussed, Maharaj, so you should, uh, uh, you should have a pure, unalloyed devotion. And then, uh, um, one solution, Indra should have stopped the fight and just surrendered to Vrtasura. So, accept him as a guru and surrender totally so that uh, you would also got uh, the mercy of, mercy of the Lord and then uh, you would have definitely gone back to Godhead. But this could not happen because of his uh, material attachment. <laughs> well, I don't know if it, it's not really Indra's duty to surrender to, to the demons because Indra's got a responsibility as the king of heaven, as the leader of the demigods. He has to, you know, they administer, they see the, the affairs of the universe on behalf of the Lord. So Indra can't just give up, he can't just surrender and say, you know, I want, I'm going to go back to Godhead. You know, Indra is the king of heaven, he's got a duty there. So it, it, it's not really, <laughs> it's not really a, his position to just sur say, okay, I surrender. <laughs> They're both demons, they're both devotees. Vritasura is a devotee and Indra is a devotee. But they have different, different ideas about what they want, you see. They have different purposes in mind. And Indra's purpose, he wants, as you say, he wants, you know, he wants the sense gratification. And he wants the opulence. He wants, you know, his position in the heavenly planets. He has his position there, he's got to keep up his position. So he wants to keep that. And Vridasura, he's a devotee also, but he's in the demon body and he wants just to get out of that body. Because he knows once he gets out of that demon body, he will go back to Godhead. So he's <laughs> It's, it's an interesting situation, devotees, two devotees fighting each other. One has one purpose, one has another purpose. But it's all in the hands of the Lord. So the Lord arranges these situations. He, the Lord could have prevented it, but it's for it's for, it's for, it's in order to allow Vritasura to go back to Godhead quicker. As we'll hear, as we go on in the, in the canto, in the sixth canto, we'll hear how Vritasura got that body. Then it previously is Chitragetu and that uh, it was arranged that he got cursed so that he could go back to Godhead quicker. It helped him to get rid of all of his karma. Because to go back to Godhead, you have to get free of all your karma. So this was how the Lord arranged for, for Chitraketu to get free of all his karma. He became the demon. He got the demon body and he has to fight Indra. And we'll see how they fight. So Chitraketu is not attached to the material body. He knows, especially when you have a body like that, you don't want to keep it. Just like Gajendra. Gajendra also had the elephant body. He also hated it. Let me out of this body. You should, when, when the Lord came and killed the crocodile, Gajendra complained. He said, you killed him, you liberated him. Why didn't you liberate me? What about me? I'm in this elephant body, I, will, I also want to get out of this body. 
not very easy to be in the body of a demon. Not very easy to be Indra, the king of heaven. So much opulence, so much temptation and sense gratification. The mind becomes bewildered. So to go back to Godhead from the heavenly planets, very difficult. Very difficult because so much sense gratification. So even the demigods, they come down here to do bhakti yoga. Because to do bhakti yoga in heaven is very difficult. Just so much sense gratification. People cannot control. So Indra has that problem. He gets overwhelmed. Sense gratification. You have to have very strong faith in the orders of Krishna and the Guru. If you don't follow the instructions of Krishna and Guru, then you cannot expect to make spiritual progress. You cannot expect to get the mercy of Krishna or Guru if we don't follow the instructions. So it's very important. Indra didn't follow the instructions. Okay, group number three. Hare Krishna Maharaj, this is Revati Gopi Maharaj. Yeah. Maharaj, already actually two groups have discussed, but still I'll repeat the few points which we discussed. First is Indra's uh, improper behavior towards his Guru Brihaspati and the priest Visharupa. Actually, for the sake of living in heavenly planets and uh, for his sense of gratification, here he shamelessly killed Visharupa to help them by giving their Narayana Kocha and all. And the second is, uh, he was doubtful that Thunderbolt might also fail towards Vrtasada. And he threw the club. It shows that he did not understand the Lord Vishnu's heart and never fails. He, did, he didn't, as you told, he didn't have the complete faith in the Lord's words. That's why uh, he didn't believe that this Vrajayada, which is supposed to kill Vrtasada, he was a little doubtful. And even though he's a devotee, if any time the Lord uh, the came in, in front of him, but still he was not uh, even much interested in release from the material bondage. He wants the sense of attitude and opulence and position, unlike Vrtasara. Here Vrtasara exhibited the, those great qualities uh, by surrendering to Lord Vishnu. And he wanted to, uh, instead of uh, choosing the uh, position, uh, he chose the service of the lotus feet of Lord. And um, here Indra represents the part who always desire for sense gratification, opulence position. They fail to understand the, uh, uh, understand to surrender to the Lord. That's why even though he got so many times help from Lord himself, he don't have complete faith in the Lord or his Guru. This is what we understood, Maharaj. Uh, yes. Maybe we, we could touch on also the danger of material opulence yeah. and how it bewilders the mind. We become attached. All right, group four, Maharaji. Who is the spokesman for group four? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, this uh, Indra, he was uh, proud of his opulence and he was puffed up that because he is the king of the uh, demigods, so he has, uh, obviously he has um, uh, opulence and uh, all everything, so he was puffed up with that and because he was always anxious about his position, he was worried whether um, others will take uh, their, take over his position or that. So that's why Vishwarupa, uh, his first, uh, first, he neglected his first guru, guru Braspadi, uh, because of his opulence and proud, and he didn't um, uh, give attention to him in the first time. And after that, when he got Vishwarupa, that time also, uh, Vishwarupa was little covered about this, the uh, uh, demons. So that time also, Indra, Indra was worried because 
uh, he will take uh, his position. So that's why he could uh, shamelessly, what Putra Sura said, he, um, uh, shamelessly he killed uh, that uh, Vishirupa also. And then uh, they, um, the, uh, when the demigods attacked them, and all, uh, Vishnu, Mahavishnu appeared uh, with, uh, before them and told them to uh, use uh, the Deji's uh, bone and use that uh, uh, weapon to kill them. That, that time also he had not much faith because he was not bothered about the Krishna consciousness or not. He was always uh, wanted that opulence only. He wanted to keep his position and that opulence. So he uh, first he used this club only. He, he, has, uh, he has not that much faith in that uh, visual uh, weapon. So he used this web, uh, club. Then he found that uh, Brutarasura uh, easily broke that weapon and then after that only he used that uh, this is born actually uh, Brutrasura um, won the battle actually this um, Indra failed actually because Brutrasura has gone back to Godhead and Indra was again entangled in this material uh, material world only because of his uh, um, attachment to his this uh, uh, material opulences. He was entangled in, in this uh, material world only. But uh, Vritrasura was in his previous birth, he was uh, uh, Chitrakedu. He, because of that, uh, Chitrakedu uh, uh, made devotion service and way. Um, even though, because of the curse of Parvati Devi, he took Vrtas and Asura, but he has all his uh, um, Chitrakedu's devotion service and faith was with him. So he knew that uh, he will go back to Godhead if, he, if this uh, um, if Indra killed him. So he told Indra, you kill me with that uh, um, the, um, uh, weapon. So then at last he went back to Godhead and this uh, uh, Indra was entangled in this material world only because of lack of faith and his... Okay, okay, so is, is it just like that? Is it so simple? You just have to get Indra to kill you and you can go back to Godhead? No, um, no because uh, Vrtrasura was his previous Denma, even though he was a uh, Asura, his previous Denma, he was Chitra Kedu, that's why he went back to Godhead. He knew that... Was it just because his previous birth that he went back to Godhead? It was all ordained. He didn't have to do anything himself to go back to Godhead? Isn't there yeah. any qualification? Isn't it something yeah. he's supposed to do? To go In back... This world, we have to complete, we have to continue that uh, um, Krishna consciousness service, devotional services, then only we can... How, then how we can... did he prepare himself for going back to Godhead? It, he didn't just tell Indra, kill me. What did he do what, as he was telling Indra to kill him? He said, I, what, what was he going to do? And pr because he thought, all right, Indra's got that weapon. He knows he's going to k be killed by Indra. So what does he do in order to, pr to be sure that he goes back to Godhead? What does Vrita Sura do? He did his duty very well, and um, uh, for the uh, uh, demons he did, uh, he fought with Indra, and uh, then uh, at last he told Indra to kill him with that uh, weapon only, that weapon with Vishnu he gave him. But there was, one, there was one thing which Vritasura did, but that in preparation for being killed, so that he would be sure to go back to Godhead. What did he? What? Krishna Maharaj. Huh? Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. He was having full faith on the words of the Lord. He just followed the instruction of the Lord. Yeah, but there's Even some. There was, but the something. Body. There's something else he did. Maharaj, he fixed. Maharaj, can I say? Yes. Yes, I'm hearing now. Right. He Who's? Right. He fixed his mind on the, on the supreme personality of Godhead. Godhead. We have to think of the Lord. It's not enough just mechanically to do things. We have to bring, we have to fix the mind, we have to prepare the mind for this time that we can think of the Lord. It's very important. Just like maybe you remember when you studied the first canto, we were reading about Bhishma Dev, how Bhishma Dev left the body. You know, he was talking for many days about so many different subject matters. He was instructing Maharaj Yudhisthira how to rule and everything. But then when it came time for him to leave the body, then he stopped all that talking. And then he fixed his mind on the Lord and he began to remember the Lord. 
So this is the business of devotee. We have to also prepare ourselves for this time, that moment when we have to leave the body. We have to practice thinking of the Lord, to bring the mind to think of the Lord. How are you going to do it? Well, how did Bhishma do it? Do you remember some of the different, what, what, what was Grandfather Bhishma thinking about? How did he think of the Lord as he prepared to leave the body? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Krishna has uh, actually Lord Krishna physically in front of him. He has seen Krishna face to face and he fixed his mind on Krishna and then he left his body. Uh -huh. But he also recounted. Yes, Hare Krishna. It was thinking about the, uh, like how he was throwing the arrow and how the body of the Lord was looking very beautiful uh, with his uh, the dust of the there on the face, it was looking like a pearl. So he was thinking about the Parthasarthi form which he had seen in the battlefield. And he was meditating on that form of the Lord also that time. Yes, actually, the, it said the destination Bhisma God is a pla planet, a Vaikuntha planet, where the Lord is there as Parthasarathi. Because Bhishma was so absorbed in seeing Lord Krishna in that form of Parthasarathi. It said Bhishma got more mercy than Arjuna because Arjuna was, he was behind the Lord. He could only see the Lord from the back because Krishna, Krishna was in front driving the chariot and Arjuna standing behind Lord Krishna. But Bhishma is directly facing Lord Krishna. So Bhishma could see the Lord, he could directly absorb his mind in, in the form of the Lord, and the features of the Lord. And he remembers throwing the arrows at the Lord and piercing the skin of the Lord, and how it's described. And he remembers also Krishna coming towards him at one point. Arjuna's chariot was in trouble, and Bhishma was coming to kill Arjuna, and Krishna came running with a chariot wheel ready to throw the chariot wheel at Bhishma to save the life of Arjuna. So Bhishma remembered these different incidents. He even remembered about the gopis and how the gopis are all glorifying Lord Krishna. And Bhishma was glorifying the gopis, how, how much love they had for Krishna. So like that, he was remembered, although the Lord was directly there before him, but still, Bhishma was remembering these different events which took, which had taken place. It's, it's not that you just, oh, the Lord is there, and, you know, but he was actually remembering everything the Lord had done and, and the reciprocation, the dealings between the Lord Krishna and his devotees. So this is how we fix the mind on the Lord. Of course, we, when we, and when we fix the mind on the Lord, sometimes there is, there, are, there is a meditation process, it's described in the third canto, you must have done it when you were reading Kapila Shiksha. How, huh? Do you remember, Maharaji? How to meditate on the different bodily limbs of the Lord? Anybody, you remember this? If you're meditating on the Lord as Paramatma and in Nastanga Yoga, they do this. They meditate on each of the different limbs progressively, beginning from the lotus feet of the Lord. Right? We have to practice thinking of the Lord, thinking of the Lord and appreciating Him, offering prayers. Right? So every day, every day we want to practice, we want to make some time where we really want to bring the mind to think of the Lord. Maybe first thing in the morning, maybe you go to Mongol Arti and you worship the deity there, think of the Lord.
we're hearing also studying Srimad Bhagavatam, we're thinking of the Lord and we want to bring this into our mind that it will have, we, will, we will think of the Lord because we all have to leave the body sometime and at that time when we leave the body that's when we want to think of the Lord. That is the final exam, right? Anta kale chamamivas maran mukba kale varam. So one who can remember the Lord at the time of death, then they can go to him without fail. So Vritasura fixed his mind on the Lord. We're not told exactly which aspect of the Lord he was fixing his mind. Do you know? What is it? What, are we told? What was Vridasura's desire? That when he's killed, he should get the association of devotees. Which, which devotees? Spiritual master. Yes. Why, why does he want association with the spiritual master or other people? He particularly mentions Narada Muni. Why? Why does he want to associate there? What's the advantage? Without the mercy of devotees, we can't attain Lord Lotus Feet. Yes, we need the mercy of the devotee. Without the mercy of the devotee, we can't go back to Godhead. We have to get the blessings of the Vaishnava to go back to Godhead. So he wants to get that blessing. And he also knows that in the association of the devotee, the pure devotees, there will be discussion of Lord Krishna. There will be chanting of the holy name. There will be a vibrant Krishna conscious atmosphere. It will be awakening, it will be in, and that will be his impetus to go back to Godhead. Of course, Vritasura is not getting much association in his demon body. He's a, he has to be with all the demons and even he meets Indra and Indra's a demigod and he's materialistic. So where's the association for, for Vritasura? He's a wonderful devotee. He's not getting any good association. So he, he's happy to be killed, give up that body, and next life he will get the association of some wonderful devotees to prepare him to go back to Godhead. We need to get the mercy of a devotee. We want to go back to God. It doesn't just happen. We have to, de we have to really desire it. We have to really endeavor, control the mind, training the mind. That's why we chant Japa every day. That's why we hear Srimad Bhagavatam every day. That's why we do puja every day. To understand, to fix our mind, thinking of the Lord. The Lord is my master, I am his servant. I am the servant of the servant. And Vritasura also prays like that. He wants to be the, the servant of the servant of the servant. So Vritasura gives us many wonderful uh, points in his presentation of the Krishna conscious philosophy. Although it's, he's, he's just speaking in a general way to Indra, he's just decrying Indra and telling Indra, you're, you know, you're, you're foolish. You're endeavouring for all of this temporary sense gratification and the power and the position of the material world is also temporary. So you want it, you take it. Vridasura said, just kill me, he said, just kill me, you've got that weapon, just use it. And so Indra, Indra, however, he's hesitating. <laughs> what to do? So 
So faith is a very important qualification and fixing the mind on the Lord is part of the process. We have to prepare ourselves to be able to think of the Lord. How can we, if we, we can't think, we'll just go back to Godhead. Just, just because we get killed by the weapon, because Indra kills us, we go back to Godhead. We have to think of the Lord. And that way we attract the mercy of the Lord. When we think of Him, the Lord thinks of us. Right? It's mentioned like that. Sometimes people, they have to leave the body untimely. And so we wonder how could they ever think of Krishna if you have to leave the body unconscious, how will you think of Krishna? But the idea is that we should have spent our whole life thinking of Krishna. And then even if we do have to leave the body unconscious or un in an unfortunate circumstance, then Krishna will not forget us. If we, if we didn't forget Krishna throughout our life, but somehow at the last minute we forgot Krishna, Krishna will think of us and he will save us. So we have to become detached from the body. This is very important. So surrendering, not to be bewildered by material opulence. These things are very dangerous for any devotee. Material opulence can the cause of misery. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also warns us, not that we have to give it up artificially, but the idea is don't be attached to anything. Just like it said we, we should be niskinchana, right? Queen Kunti said that Lord Krishna is the property of the materially impoverished. Right? Do you know that verse? Who knows the verse? Yes. Yeah. And what, what, there's also Janma Aishwarya. Yes, Akinchana Gochara, right? No, so, so Niskinchana. Who, 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 who do we have? Who are the Niskinchana? Who's Niskinchana in our parampara? Do you know any of the Acharyas in our line who are Niskinchana? Yes, right. That's the one I was thinking, right. Gorkishor Das Babaji. You, you can tell us anything about how, what he did? You remember? Uh, I think no, uh, Maharaj, uh, once somebody gave uh, uh, Srila Gorkishor Das Babaji Maharaj a small donation and then after walking with it, he started feeling that I'm feeling very heavy with this and he went and returned. It was, I think it was one rupee or one ana. It was some very small amount which even he didn't later want to keep it. Also, he was chanting. He would go and chant in the public toilet because people used to come to him for blessings. And he didn't like to be troubled by the materialistic people who came for blessings. So there was one Maharaja, you know, uh, one ruler who had a big, big, big land, a big estate. And he was coming to Gorkishore Das Babaji and he was asking Gorkishore Das Babaji to come to his palace and to have a program and to preach there. 
And Gorkishore Das Babaji said, No, no, he said, he said, I, you want me to become one of your, your property, just like you've got so much property, you want me to also become part of you, your property. You've got so many servants, you want me to also serve you. And the, 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 the man said, Oh, no, no, I'm your servant. I've, I want to serve you. So then Gorky Shodas Babaji said, Oh, really? He said, Okay, then you come and sit here with me. You come and sit in the public toilet with me and we will chant together. Don't go anywhere. And so the man ran away. He was not willing to do that. But Gorky Shodas Babaji, he, he had Niskinchana means you don't own anything. You have nothing. So then Prabhupada said, Ramananda Rai, he was also Niskinchana. Now Ramananda Rai, what ashram is he in? Grihastha. Yes, he's a Grihastha, right. And it, what was his occupation? What was he doing? Yes, he was like governor in South India before he met Lord Chaitanya. After he met Lord Chaitanya, he gave it all up and came to Jagannath Puri. But Prabhupada said he was also Niskinchana. So it's not a material thing, but it's, it's the concept that, that what is the consciousness? Are we thinking I'm the proprietor? Are we thinking this belongs to me, this is mine? One who is actually Niskinchana, he understands everything belongs to Krishna. And he's not just saying that, he really believes it, he understands it. So Prabhupada said, Ramananda Rai, he was also Niskinchana. He was fully aware, of course, fully conversant with all the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. And that's why Lord Chaitanya took him as one of his intimate associates. Although he was not a sannyasi, but he was very spiritually advanced. And so we have to understand the spiritual position, that it's nothing to do with the body. We shouldn't be attached to the body and we shouldn't be attached to things in relation to the body. And we're learning, we're seeing from the preaching of Vritasura, how Vritasura is talking to Indra and how, how Vritasura is desiring to get the association of devotees, just to be with the, you know, to get the, the to be the servant of the servant of the Vaishnavas, to hear the glories of the Lord and the association of devotees. And he said, he says he wants to fix his mind on Lord Sankarshan. Vritasura says Lord Sankarshan. Why Lord Sankarshan? Well, it could be Lord Krishna, it could be Lord Vishnu, it doesn't matter. Any of the forms of the Lord will take us back to Godhead. Somehow Vritasura is particularly inclined to think of Lord Sankarshan and Lord Sankarshan is just not, not different really from the Supreme Lord. He is also the Supreme Lord. Hmm. Okay, so then Vrita Sura also talks about using body, mind and words everything in the service of the Lord. The body can engage in physical activities for the pleasure of the Lord. Within his mind he can contemplate the qualities and pastimes of the Lord and with his words he can also describe the activities and the, and the glories of the Lord. And naturally, one who has this, this desire, he must have the mood to be, to be the servant. So Vridasuras, although he's fighting Indra, he's thinking, you know, 
it's a service. It's a service. Just like Bhishma is fighting against Krishna. What was Bhishma thinking when he's throwing arrows into Lord Krishna? Do you remember the example which is given? Bhishma is firing arrows. Yes. Right, right. It's like somebody showering the person with flowers, throwing rose petals at someone. But Bhishma was firing arrows. And, 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 and the wounds on Krishna. Said, is like love bites. Yeah. Love bites. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the mood. So Vrita is also, he's got his thing. It's not exactly, you, we don't hear the same thing as, uh, <laughs> because Vrita is fighting Indra. <laughs> So, so Vredasura wants to be the servant of the servant. He wants to get this position. And Prabhupada also brings up the point about in the material world how people want opulence and sense gratification. What will determine if they get the opulence, if they get the sense gratification? What decides how much opulence somebody gets? Past karma? Yes, the past karma. It depends on the past karma, right? Somebody's got some good karma, they get some wealth, all right? They get wealth. It may be wealth, it may be other things, other… like Janma Aishwarya Shruta Shri. This is all karma, right? Somebody's got good karma, they've got good education, or they've got good looks, or they've got money, or something like this, you see? It's, but what about a devotee? What determines what a devotee gets? Is it the same for a devotee? Is it also depending on their karma? That some devotee's got good karma, so he gets more money or less money? Is Krishna got, we hear, you know, giving money to somebody is not very good for them. So, is Krishna going to make it that all the devotees should be poor? First, you deserve, then, according to what one deserves in the service of Krishna, then Krishna will provide. Yes, Sitala Madhavi Maharaji, what do you say? Uh, yeah, if it's not detrimental to devotional service, it should be useful for his devotional service, right? Yes, Maharaj. Yeah, if you're going to use it for Krishna's service, then Krishna can provide it. Can you think? Huh? Sorry. So if you look at the history, Maharaj, the most richest person on the earth are the devotees. Really? Maharaj, Maharaj and again, uh, Dhruv Maharaj, Yudhishthira Maharaj, they are the richest person. So Krishna gives, he doesn't take actually. Wow. Oh. <laughs> what about in the present times? Amarish Prabhu Maharaj. Yeah. Well, Krishna took all his wealth away. Really? He gave it all to Mayapur. He doesn't have any money now. Yes. That's what they think. That's what… Uh, that's, how, that's how it was described here in Mayapur one time. This, one, the Bhakti Purushottam Swami was talking, he said that, that Ambarisha has become like a beggar now. <laughs> because, because he gave everything to build the temple, and he comes around, he comes and asks people to help 
to build the temple. And so, yeah, Krishna can give and Krishna can take. We saw Krishna give. Who did he give to? Who did he give money to when they needed it? Can you think Sudama, of... Sudama Raj? Huh? Sudama Vipra? Sudama Vipra? Yeah, he gave, that's right, he gave Sudama so much opulence. Did Sudama want it? No, he didn't want it, Maharaj. He didn't want it, right. Krishna made him take it. <laughs> it's an austerity for him. Somebody... Even Dhruva also, uh, King Dhruva. Yeah, Dhruva also didn't want, but Krishna said, no, you have to take it now. <laughs> you did all this austerity, you have to take it and go. Do. Maharaj, even Bali Maharaj also, initially he took, but afterwards he gave. Okay, Bali Maharaj, he got the subterranean heavenly planets, right? Sutala Loka. And we see also Raghunath Das Goswami was at Radhakund. He needed money to renovate, to make a nice bathing lake at Radhakund. And there was one man, he was going to Badrinath with a lot of gold. But he got a dream telling him, take this money to Radhakun, give it to Raghunath, he needs it. So the man followed the dream and he came down and he went to Radhakun and he gave all his wealth to Raghunath. And Raghunath, that's how we have the big lake there at Radhakun. And Maharaj Sanatana Goswami also, he got the money to make the Mother Mohan temple? Yes, right. Maharaj, even Priyavrat Maharaj also, no? he didn't want to become king, he wanted to remain in the Krishna service, but by Brahma's... Lord Brahma came and took, said, you have to go, right? You have to do your duty. We need somebody to be king. That's why Ambuvamana wants to retire. <laughs> so you have to go. Narada was not agreeing at first. Narada was saying, don't go, Maya. But Lord Brahma came and, and said, no, he has to go. So Narada Muni had to agree. So Priyavrata went and became the king and later on renounced everything. So Krishna can give when you need something. You need it for Krishna's service, Krishna... Just like Prabhupada needed people, he needed people to, they were needing people to type. Prabhupada had so many things, so many, he'd written so much and nobody knew how to type. And suddenly just this boy walked in the door, a stranger, and he offered, he said, anything I can do to help? And they said, you know how to type? He said, oh yeah, sure. And he sat down, he typed out all the Prabhupada's scripts, he typed up everything. And then, so after he finished typing, he just disappeared again. They never saw him again. So Krishna sends people. Mother Malati was describing, they needed money, they needed to pay the rent, they had no money. Somehow somebody just came and gave a donation, just enough to pay all the rent. They don't know who he was, he just came. Krishna arranges. Krishna takes care of the devotees. When the devotees are surrendered, Krishna will reciprocate, right? What's the verse in Bhagavad Gita? Yes, right. That's right. Yoga Shema Vahamyaham. For one who meditates on my transcendental form and worships me with love, for him I carry what they lack, I preserve what they have. So we have to develop this full dependence on Lord Krishna. This is our real business as devotees, right? Just simply depending on Krishna and taking shelter of Krishna. So we have to train our minds constantly to think of Krishna. And that's why we chant japa every day, 
That's why we have to have morning program, we have to do these things. Make our mind chaste that we will never go away from Krishna. Even if you're cursed, even if we're cursed to put, and we're put into the demon body, we'll, we'll never forget Krishna. You see the wonderful thing about Vritasura, that although he was in the demon body, he didn't lose his bhakti. He didn't lose his bhakti, right? What does Krishna say in the Bhagavad Gita about bhakti? How does he describe it? What's the translation? I am available by bhakti only. No, I, I was thinking of another verse. I'm thinking that. And I'm thinking. Uh, <laughs> the verse I'm thinking of is uh, a little advancement on this path can save one from the greatest thing. <laughs> Yeah, in, in this endeavor, there is no loss or diminution, and a little advancement on the path saves us from the greatest danger. So th this is a, the, the, whatever bhakti we have, we'll never lose it. It's going like it goes in your bank account, you know. But you know, material world, the bank account's not eternal, but our devotional bank account. That is eternal. That doesn't get taken up. That will stay. That we can build on that. Whatever bhakti, whatever service we do for the Lord is to, for our eternal benefit. Hmm? Yeah? Sorry, <laughs> Okay. Okay, any other points here? About Vridasura, we want to make him our hero, right? We need heroes. You know, the people who have heroes today, they're all demons, you know. Um, they're demons, but they're not demons like Vritasura. Vritasura is a demon devotee. But the demons, the heroes today, the so-called heroes are just sinful, vikarmis. The, but the real hero here in Srimad Bhagavatam is Vritasura. And he's preaching to Indra. Indra is supposed to be king of heaven, but he's getting a good lesson in devotion from Vritasura. What it means to be a devotee, to surrender, to be the servant of the servant, and to fix the mind on the Lord at every moment. Okay, so we'll stop here tonight. We'll meet you again on Monday night, right? We'll finish off this Frita Sura. Two chapters. Next class we're going to do two chapters. We'll hear about the death of Vrita Sura and we'll go on to Indra's sinful reactions to finish the unit. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrindaki. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna.